Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ijoma Fab. So today I'll be taking you on how to draft a bustier with a yoke. I have my vertical measurement drawn out here, but I'll be taking you through it. So this is going to serve as a shoulder line. So from the shoulder to the bust point is nine and a half inches. From the shoulder to the under bust is 13 inches. And from the shoulder to the waist is 15 inches. So I have a one inch seam allowance here. So to draft this, you need to draft your basic bodice pattern first or your half length pattern. So I'm working with a half length. So I'll be using a half length pattern to achieve this. So I'll start by imputing half of the shoulder measurement on this line. And the measurement I'm working with is 6 3 quarter. So I'm going to mark 6 3 quarter here. And the width I want to work with is 4 inches. And the depth I'll be working with will be three and a half inches. So with my curve, I'm going to connect the neckline. So the next thing to do now is to create the shoulder slope or the shoulder slant. So where the shoulder stops, I'll be coming down by one inch here. And from this point here, I'm going to connect to the neck width. So the next thing now is to create the armhole. The armhole depth I'm working with is seven and a half inches. So I'll come down here by seven and a half inches. So this will now be our chest line. So the next thing now is to create the armhole. And to achieve that, I'll first mark quarter of the bust circumference on the chest line. So quarter of the bust circumference I'm working with is nine and quarter. And on this line, I'm going to mark half of what I have here. So I have seven and a half here, and half of it will put me at three, three quarter. So on this point, I'll come in by half of an inch. And the next thing I will do is to connect from here to this point and to the chest line. So now that we have this done, the next thing now is to determine the length of the yoke we want to make use of. So the length of the yoke I want to make use of is 6 inches. So on this line here, which is the shoulder line, I'm going to place my tip this way and mark 6 inches downward. I also place my tip this way and mark 6 inches. So I'm going to connect with a straight line. So I'm going to label this yoke. So the next thing now to do is to impute the depth. And I'll be making use of half of the bust span measurement, or you can also call it nipple to nipple measurement. So half of the bust span measurement I'm working with is three and a half inches. And I'm going to add half inch seam allowance. So that will be four inches. So I'm going to mark the four inches, which will be my dark leg. From here where this yoke stops, the length of the yoke, from here all the way down. So the next thing to do is to impute the dart. So on this under bust, I'm going to mark one inch towards the center piece here and one and a half inches here because the person is not so busty. Another way you can do this is to subtract your under bust circumference from your bust circumference. Whatever you have, you divide by two. So if you have three inches, one inch will go here and two inches will go here. So I'm going to mark one inch here and one and a half inches this side. And on the waist, I'll be doing the same thing. So I'm going to mark one and a half inches here and one inch on this side. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect these markings with a straight line. So to create the curve where the bust will sit, on the bust point here, I'm going to come down by half of an inch. And I'll go upwards also by half of an inch. So if you're working with a big boss, you can come down by one inch and go upwards by one inch. So this will create more room for the boss to sit. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect from here with my curve to this point, And I'll connect from here also to this point. So coming up here where this yoke ends, I'm going to mark my dots here. On both sides so I'll be marking one inch on this side and one inch on this side 
So now that I've marked my dot, the next thing now is to connect it to this point here. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to blend this a bit. And also you need to blend here a bit too. And here. So we're trying to avoid sharp edges at this part. So now that we've achieved this, the next thing now to do is to impute the horizontal measurement. So for the waist, I'm going to impute quarter of the waist circumference. And quarter of the waist circumference is seven three quarter. So I'm going to mark it here. So after marking quarter of the waist circumference, I'll need to calculate what I have here as my dart and also add it because I'll be taking away this dart. So my dart is two and a half inches. So I'm going to add it here. Two and a half inches. Quarter of the underboard circumference is also seven three quarter. So I'll be marking my seven three quarter here, and I'll also add this two and a half inches that. So on the chest line here, I'm going to impute quarter of the bust circumference. So I already have it marked here, which is nine and quarter. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to impute this two inches that. So I'm going to place two inches here after the nine and quarter. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect this marking. So the next thing we'll need to do is to add back this allowance that we took here on this panel. So I'm going to extend this line by two inches. So I took away two inches from here. I'm going to extend it this way so if i don't replace the dot on this panel after sewing i'll be having a shortage on this panel so from this two inches extension now i'm going to connect from here now to this chest line so after doing this you can go ahead and add your allowance so if you don't want to add your allowance on your pattern you can go ahead and add it directly on your fabric but i'll be adding a two and a half inches allowance all through so i'm going to connect the dot so on this line here where the yoke ends you can decide to leave it straight this way or give it any shape of your choice so on this point here i'm just going to come down here by half an inch so this is because the person doesn't want it to be so revealing so I'm going to connect from this half inch just to make a little sweet hat. So I'm going to connect from here to this line here. So I'm going to make use of my cuff to do that. But you can use your free hand. So after this, before you cut out, you need to remember to add a half inch on your shoulder. So I'm going to go up here by half inch. So we're done drafting the front panel. The next thing now is to cut this out. But please, if you're drafting like I'm doing, I'm using a single paper to do this. On your fabric, you need to fold your fabric to cut this out. So this is how the front panel looks like after cutting this out. So like I said before, you need to make sure that your fabric is unfold while you're cutting this. While cutting, you need to add a half inch on your fabric at the top here for joining to the yoke. And at the same way, you're going to add a half inch on this panel. And on this yoke, you need to also add a half inch down here. So this will also be your sewing allowance to join the yoke to this panel. So for the back panel, I have my vertical measurement already imputed. So this is my zipper allowance of one and a half inches. So I have from the shoulder to the bust point, which is nine and a half inches. From the shoulder to here, which is the waist, which is 15 inches. And the one inch seam allowance. So the neck width I use here is also four inches, just like the front. The neck depth here is two and a half inches. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to mark out the armhole. So on this line, I'm going to impute quarter of the bust circumference. So the next thing I'll do is to mark half of what I have here. So from here, I'll connect to this point to form the armhole curve. So the next thing now to do is also to mark where my yoke is going to stop. So I'm also going to mark six inches like I did for the front panel. So the yoke will be six inches. I'm going to connect with a straight line. 
So the next thing now is to impute the DAT. So I'm going to impute half of the boss pound measurement plus half inch. So just like I did for the front, I made use of four inches. So I'm going to mark four inches on this point here, straight down. So for the back yoke, at the depth here, you could decide to give it any design of your choice. So you could decide to come down here with a slant, making sure it hits at the six inches. You can decide to start from here also and give it an oval shape, or you could decide to leave it straight the way it is. So I'm going to show you how it will look like if I decide to come down here, maybe to create a different design. So I'm going to come down maybe by one inch here, and I'm going to connect to this point with a straight line. So if you're going to work with this, when you take your dart, you'll be stopping at this point here. So your dart starts from here and stops at this point. But I'll be making use of this blue line. So I want the back yoke to be straight. So I'm going to connect my dart from down here at the waist up until this point. So the next thing to do now is to impute the horizontal measurement. So here I already have quarter of the bus circumference imputed. So I'm going to mark this dot. This is half inch. So I'll be adding the dot here, half inch. And I'll also add two and a half inches seam allowance on this point here. And on the waist, I'll mark quarter of the waist circumference here. And I will also add this dart. So the dart I have here is one inch. So I'm going to replace the dart one inch and also add two and a half inches seam allowance. So I went ahead to connect the marking from the chest line to the waist. So here I'm going to label out this place yoke also. So for the back panel, I wouldn't be adding any extension like I did for the front. So for your back panel, another way you can impute your dart measurement is to take in your dart and stop about one inch above the bust point. So at the zipper allowance here, I'll be going in by half inch. So this is to avoid zipper board. So I'm going to connect from here all the way to here, which is the chest line. So before you cut out, you need to add a half inch on the shoulder here. So I have a shortage here, but when I'm drafting on the fabric, I'll be adding my half inch on the shoulder. So for the back panel, you could decide to make your zipper start from the beginning of your yoke to the end of your outfit, or you take away the zipper allowance on the yoke. So I'm going to leave a picture on the screen for you to understand what I mean. So after cutting, this is how it looks like. So this is the yoke for the back, and this is the other panel. So I made mention of eliminating the zipper allowance at the yoke panel. So this is what I mean. So you can as well take this in this way. If you don't want your zipper allowance to start from around this yoke, so this is how it's going to be like. So your zip will start from here. Another way you can do this also is to give it a slant or a curve. So if you're going to give it a curve, you can start from up the neckline and link your curve back to this line. So we've come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. So in my next video, I'll be showing you how to sew the panels together.